What is going on guys? Grave here. Today I'd like to talk about how the Call of Duty community has really blown up over the last year. It's getting bigger and bigger every year and how that is really good for the game. But at the same time, I think it's bad in some ways. And I'm going to kind of talk about those things today. I've seen a lot of conversation about this on, on different social media outlets and things like that. Uh, before I get into it, if you're not subscribed, please take a second to subscribe to the channel. If you are a subscriber, make sure you got the notification zone. If you like the video, smash the like button. I'd appreciate it. Of course, check out everything down in the description, the community discord, my Twitter, and of course the affiliate GT Racing. Now that that's out of the way, uh, Activision today did state uh, something that is pretty mind-blowing to me. And that was they announced that Call of Duty has surpassed $3 billion in net bookings in the last 12 months alone. First of all, usually when you hear Activision talk about how much money they've made in the quarter or whatever the case may be, it's usually Activision and Blizzard together. So it's usually Call of Duty and World of Warcraft. What kind of money World of Warcraft and COD have made together, and it's still pretty mind blowing year in and year out how many people play both of those games. But for them to come out and say they passed three billion dollars in net bookings in twelve months, this is one of their highest years to date for sales in franchise history. They also went on to say uh, Activision over the last twelve months of fan engagement and premium game sales of Call of Duty had reached a all time high, uh, not just a all time high, the highest in franchise history. Um, they said this they they kind of say that the whole idea of why this is happening is the new shared ecosystem business model not loot boxes not paid dlc they think all of this stuff is what's kind of made this happen in my opinion it's warzone uh warzone was free to play the battle pass is not really that expensive they've done a great great job in my opinion uh with modern warfare with the skins and things so uh, that's really going to help out also, they said over 200 million players have played Call of Duty alone in 2020 across console, PC, and uh, mobile, and revenue is up 80% compared to 2019. So this year alone, 2020, that revenue was up 80% compared to 2019, which is also pretty impressive. Um, and of course, you know, Call of Duty making tons of money, uh, you know, bringing in all these new players. It's kind of where we're at with Call of Duty right now. That's why I always say, you know, I don't think skill-based matchmaking is going anywhere. I think the game is definitely changing uh, to kind of fit the needs of all of these players. And while I think it is absolutely wonderful that Call of Duty is continuing to grow, uh, not only is it a game now, it's a a, a big pro scene, a big, you know, uh, pro league kind of, uh, of atmosphere. Uh, they're selling games. They're selling, you know, skins and things in the store. They're also selling merchandises overall, Call of Duty t-shirts, hats, whatever the case may be. Um, and I think eventually, probably nine, ten years down the road, you're going to see uh, the Call of Duty Pro League scene blow up even more. It may get to the point eventually where it's like the viewer counts and money uh, for uh, winnings like you see with League of Legends. Um, you think about the pioneers of the Pro League scene. If you watch watched Call of Duty Pro League for years uh, like I have, you think about the big timer, Merc, uh, Rambo. All those kind of guys, Nade Shot, that started off years and years and years ago, then really didn't make much uh, compared to what they make today. Uh, now you see these pro players like Skump, uh, which of course Karma has now recently retired, uh, Crim6, um, Clayster, some of these big names attach. Uh, these guys are making a lot more than they have made in the past when they first started, and a lot more than those guys that started out playing Pro League Call of Duty. And I'm going to say in 10 or 15 years from now, what those guys will be making is going to be enormous compared to what they made in recent memory you know over the last several years so overall i think the community is just growing and continue to grow and of course there are a, uh, uh, one really key factor i think when it comes to Warzone, that's going to be as long as they can keep the che uh, cheating cheating and cheaters in check uh, i think that's the one thing that could really ruin Warzone. i know a lot of people want new maps and new things into Warzone. that's going to happen with this integration eventually uh with black ops one i think you'll see a new map uh, at, at some point but as long as they can keep the cheaters in check, I think the Warzone community is going to continue to grow. And I think with that Warzone community being so big, it brought players into the game. I think when Warzone came out, if people did not own Modern Warfare at that time, I think a lot of people bought Modern Warfare after they played Warzone. I think a lot of players that played Warzone bought Black Ops Cold War. They already said Black Ops Cold War was one of the largest, uh, you know, launches in franchise history as well. So um, it's just as a whole, the community is just getting larger and larger. And the point I'm trying to really make here is, is Call of Duty is going to change. The skill-based match, uh, skill matchmaking that I've talked about in several videos, while I just said I've just gotten used to it, it just is how it is. There's no really need to me anymore to complain about it or be upset about it or be frustrated about it. 
because I think that's where, where where the game is going. I think that's here to stay. And the reason I think so is because the community is getting so large. At the end of the day, it's a business. Uh, they're going to make money and want player a larger player base. If uh, let's just say, for example, I had thirty million YouTube subs, and I was complaining every day about skill based matchmaking, do you think Activision would care? Absolutely not, because the percentage of my viewers and the percentage of you know large massive YouTubers that complain about it, or you know just streamers or whatever the case may be, is nowhere near compared to the percentage of just the normal average everyday player. And uh, when it comes to this, they're going to keep players that are not good, that are players that are just average, playing in those lobbies together so they will enjoy the game. That's what you hear about. A lot of people saying they're new to Call of Duty or they haven't played in a long time. And if they're just an average player or below average player, they're really enjoying the game. They get on and play, you know, a couple times a week, you know, a couple hours a day, whatever the case may be. Um, they're really enjoying it because they're not getting thrown in these sweaty skill-based matchmaking lobbies like players that are higher skill level, higher score per minutes, higher KDs. Uh, the ones pretty much uh, of us that are all griping about it. You know, I talk about it, but like at the same time, I said, I, I know it's kind of is what it is. So there's no really need to be upset about it. Um, it's kind of have to deal with it and go with it as it kind of comes. <laughs> it's kind of the way I look at it. But it's gone are the days, in my opinion, of your, you know, your COD 2, your COD 4, uh, your Modern Warfare 3s, your Modern Warfare 2s, just going in pub stomping, getting nukes, whatever the case may be. Because they're not really going to put really good players in lobbies like that anymore unless you reverse boost or unless you have multiple accounts where you can swap you know from your scrub account to your good account and join on it and, and get in those bad lobbies i mean that this is pretty much how it's going to be uh and like i said i've I just kind of come to deal with that and, and kind of come to understand that and like i said even though it does suck and it's not as fun to you know go in and play public matches as it used to be at the same time i feel like the overall experience, uh, as, as bad as it may be for some, is going to get better because the community is going to continue to grow. If it keeps this kind of pace, this game is going to be absolutely massive. And to think about it, I mean, Call of Duty's always always been a big game. It's always had a big following, a big community. But you compare Call of Duty now to 10 years ago, it is unreal the amount of players that have jumped in playing the game, whether it be... Uh, you know, just the regular multiplayer, whether it be zombies, whether it be a war zone, the player base is getting just bigger and bigger each year, each title. And I think, like I said, it's going to change the game forever. And I'm glad to see the community grow. I don't want to see Call of Duty just die off because I like a lot of shooters. And I can give one example of a shooter that has not done well over the last few years. And that's Battlefield. I really enjoy playing Battlefield. But over the last several years, Battlefield has suffered. Battlefield has not been the game that it used to be. Call of Duty now, where I'll, while you either agree with skill-based matchmaking, disagree with it, hate it, love it, whatever the case may be, nobody really, I don't think, can sit here and say, well, Call of Duty's not growing. I mean, it is absolutely getting bigger and bigger, even though there may be some issues that some players, some YouTubers, some streamers, some casual players don't like. But at the end of the day, like I said, it's going to continue to grow as long as they keep it on track, kind of with the system they're going with. And I do say, I, I kind of do agree with them saying that they kind of, you know, look at this whole big growth idea uh, coming from their new, you know, free DLC. And I think that does help. I really do think Warzone was a big part of that uh, reason the game grew so much. So many people come into the community. But I can't I can understand why they, they, they kind of, you know, have that idea that that free system is helping the game as well. Because in my opinion... The one thing Modern Warfare did really right was bringing in that system. That system was the best uh, monetization system that Call of Duty has ever had. And I don't think you'll ever see it go in a different direction. It's always going to be like Modern Warfare or even better in the future, maybe. Uh, you're always going to have that same type of monetization system because it was so popular. It did so well. And it made them tons of money. I mean, you look at you look at it, you, you charge a, a small price for a battle pass. Uh, bring out tons of cool skins and things. People are going to spend the money on it. They're they're going to spend a lot more money on that than they would buying you know four maps and a gun or four maps and a couple weapon skins you know or whatever the case may be with a you know kind of a pass DLC type thing. Um, so yes, that that has contributed to some of the you know growth stats. But like I said, I, I think Warzone. Uh, I, I think skill based matchmaking is helping in, in some aspects just because players that were used to get pub stomped and old lobbies that I would play in back in the day when I first started playing are not quitting the game. You know, if let's just say for some reason, skill-based matchmaking made me so mad that I quit the game and I was a quote 
higher skill player, higher KD player, whatever the case may be, Activision is not going to care if I quit, considering they'll have 10 or 20 more uh, lower skill players that are continuing to play every day because that skill-based matchmaking is not putting them in lobbies where they're just getting slapped around 24-7. Um, I'm kind of curious what you guys think. Do you like to see the direction Call of Duty is going in? Do you like the idea of the growth of the community? Or are you kind of not happy with the situation because of what the things I've talked about? Like I said, skill-based matchmaking is here to stay because it's going to help keep this community where it's at and keep it growing larger and larger. And another kind of example I can give you really quick is I look at something like Red Dead Online. Red Dead Online is not that popular of a game compared to GTA, you know, GTA Online. At the same time, I'm not sure if I would ever like Red Dead Online to be GTA Online, to be the same, you know, size, to be the same player base, that kind of thing, because I think it would change the game. And I really look at that's how Call of Duty has been. If I think of COD 4 to compare to now, you know, Black Ops Cold War, the game has changed. It's changed a lot. Is it for the is it better or for the better or for the worse? I'm not going to be the one to sit here and tell you it's better or worse. But overall, I'm glad to see the community grow, and that's the one thing that I'm always happy to see. It's a game that I enjoy playing, getting larger and larger year after year. There's some things we may not like about it. We're just going to have to learn to deal with them. Uh, but anyway, guys, leave me a comment with your thoughts. And, of course, if you'd like to hit the like, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.